Thank you, Hugh. So, here it is. Manchester City against Arsenal, part one. The parity for two of the most significant matches that the two will ever have played against the other. And what a mouth-watering prospect this taster is. A tie that will see one of the country's top two eliminated in an FA Cup campaign that's already seen nearly half of the sides in the Premier League vanquished. It is nearly 18 months since Arsenal were last here. And there's no match that better illustrates their extraordinary progress than this one. That last visit to the Etihad nearly underlined the depth of work that was needed. A 5-0 defeat that comprised the third successive goalless loss at the start of the last league campaign. How easy it was to draw conclusions. A hasty assessment of a snapshot in time. But how easy it was for Arsenal fans to fear that the images resembled the bigger picture. A gradual extension of a long-established downward curve. Manchester City away felt like a necessary impediment to be navigated rather than the type of day that defined their season. But now, nothing could be further from the truth. These will be the games that are the be-all and end-all. Where one could well supply the knockout punch to eliminate the other from the title race. And tonight, the chance to inflict that decisive blow in the cup and potentially aid their traction with a psychological uppercut in the process. City have Ortega in goal, Lewis Stone to Kanji and Ake, Rodri and Gundogan, Mares De Bruyne and Grealish, and Haaland for Arsenal. It's Turner, Tomiyasu holding Gabriel and Tierney, Fabio Vieira, Partey and Xhaka, Saka and Kedia and Trossard. Referee this evening, Paul Tierney, the man who took charge of Arsenal's sole league defeat of the campaign. Just across town from here, at Old Trafford. It is the greatest domestic cup competition in the world. The third round had the lot, and the fourth round starts with a supreme heavyweight clash. 32 teams remain. Those ranked one and two go head to head. The FA Cup weekend, live with passion on Talk Sport, starting with an absolute cracker. Delighted to say alongside me for it is Stuart Pearce. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. As I say, one of the top two's got to go out the cup competition. I think there'll be a few teams across the country having a look at this game tonight uh, and thinking, well, I'm glad we've not taken one of them on just yet. We'll leave them till later in the round. Thomas Partey fouled, taking a free kick for Arsenal, who are in their traditional colours. So too Manchester City in the light blue shirts. Kick from left to right and have a goal kick which Ortega will take and have started the last four domestic cup ties for City the last two Champions League ties as well and he clears it right footed high through the middle where Haaland is trying to roll Rob Holding and the referee has said there was a foul but has given it Arsenal's way and immediately Manchester City players surround referee Tierney it was just one long punt through the middle Haaland trying to turn past the former Bolton man and the two of them colliding there was a bit of shirt pulling going on a bit of shoving and the referee has decided that's a free kick to Arsenal Stuart you've seen a replay absolutely ludicrous decision by the referee um, you know what has Haaland got to gain being the quicker player to grapple uh, the Arsenal defender terrible decision I think I don't know whether at this early in the game Jim he's not made the decision because he thinks he might have to meet out a very harsh punishment potentially well there were a couple of covering defenders whether either of them would have been able to get there in time remains a moot point but had he given it the other way he might have had to have produced a red card inside the opening 90 seconds as it is it's still 11 against 11 it's still nil nil and Tierney will take a throw for Arsenal the last two games between these two have seen the Gunners reduced to 10 men Gabriel set off in the most recent of those which was a 2-1 victory for City in North London Rodri scoring a stoppage time winner in a fixture on New Year's Day last year and Granit Xhaka set off in the first half here on Arsenal's last trip to these parts and that 5-0 defeat they've got it with Partey playing it back for Rob Holding whose heart might still be beating just a, a little bit more quickly than he'd like he finds Tommy Yasu back he goes for Turner Turner who we've seen on a few occasions in his brief Arsenal career and for the United States in the World Cup not too happy with the ball at his feet made a hash of getting it away City then in the next phase of play pull it back 
and Rodri fires it over the bar. Three gone, nil-nil on Talk Sport. You won't hear it on any other national radio station tonight. Well, we were talking about the importance of goalkeepers there. Turner will be expected to play out from the back and on that occasion got it horribly wrong and induced the first effort at goal. And it's just looking at a player that he's picked tonight in the Arsenal ranks that played in the World Cup so he didn't have a break in Saka and I think he's Arsenal's most important player I really do out of all the players they could lose to injury that might hurt them the most this season Saka I think is the one Saka is the target of a flick on there from Eddie and Ketia Manchester City got it back for Ortega he clears again looking quite long and City winning it in the midfield with Gundogan finding Jack Grealish Grealish playing it back for Ake. Manchester City adopting this very lopsided formation when they're in possession as they've done the last couple of games. It's one of the reasons that Pep so loves Rico Lewis who's in possession now, the 18-year-old, but ostensibly a right back when they're out of possession. Uh, but he will just push forward into midfield all the time. And when City have the ball, they stretch it wide and Stones drifts out to the right of the three. Again, Ortega looking long, straight down the middle for Haaland. It's a good battle between the Haaland and Holding and the Manchester City supporters will think they might get the better of that. Trossard on his full debut for Arsenal bringing it forward towards the edge of the penalty area. Trossard has already scored here this season in his Brighton days. Twisting and turning, getting it in left footed just behind Saka. Tommy Asun coming onto it. It's a really good stop. First save of the game from Ortega. Tierney hooking a high ball inside the penalty area that Stones heads clear. De Bruyne can help it further away. Party trying to help it on. City got everybody back behind the ball. Gabriel for Trossard. Wearing 19 for his new club. Tierney taking it on. Shaka will be able to pick it up. Trossard's got it again. Trossard to the corner of the penalty area. Right footed in. Swinging delivery. Ake backpedalling is able to steer it away and then run onto his own header to be able to clear. Arsenal again picking up the pieces in the midfield. And have done so with Party. Party back for Shaka. And then Shaka works it back the other way towards Thomas Party again. And Arsenal will be able to mop up at the back. But it was a decent move from Arsenal getting it forward. And Trossard already causing a couple of early problems, Stuart Pierce. Yeah, he certainly is. He's prepared to run. It, it was at Stones who filled in at right back on that occasion. Prepared to run at him and twist and turn him. And uh, Arsenal have started this game very, very soundly. Pressed on, gone blanket press, man for man. Happy to leave three on three on the halfway line. And it'll be important that City get that ball forward and try and isolate Haaland with holding. Stones back for Ortega. Ortega playing it through the midfield looking for Riyad Mahrez. And Gabriel had followed him, stepping up and knocks it away. Uh, Pep Guardiola comes out of the technical area and uh, applauds very vigorously in the direction of John Stones. That'll be a goal kick which will be taken by Ortega. I think what he liked about Stones, and he's given him a few instructions now, was that he was just happy to sit possession, try and draw the press, lay it back for the goalkeeper, and that'll play into City's tactic of trying to work it forward long really quickly to isolate the forward three against Arsenal's back three. City have a free kick over on the far touchline. We're well, six and a half minutes in here in the Etihad, where the smoke from the uh, pre-match pyros has uh, finally dissipated. And Stones can play it forward for the blonde head De Bruyne. Forward from him to Riyad Mahrez, who's in such a sparkling run of form in the FA Cup. Six goals in his last five ties in this competition. The ball goes out of play. Mahrez winning the throw. And it's taken quickly by Lewis, but not effectively. Stones actually did really well to rescue it. Although in knocking it back down towards Lewis, it had just gone over the line. And out of play for an Arsenal throw. Engaging yeah. spectacle, we didn't expect anything else, Jim. No, definitely we didn't. Two teams coming into this game with supreme confidence. Who, well, City, you expect that from them. Arsenal playing probably as good a football as you've seen, maybe for a decade potentially. Um, playing really well. And it's interesting to see the, the Arsenal press, as I say, not afraid to go man for man, squeeze right on. And it's the distances the goalkeeper's got, or Tager's got, to put that ball. I don't think he's got the distance that Edison's got to put it in behind their back line. If Edison's was playing, it's a whole different ball game, I think. Ortega with a more measured chip forward this time and Mahrez has done well to come to meet and flick it on for Haaland. Haaland nodding it back, Rodri couldn't get there first, Shaka could. Shaka played it forward but missed Eddie and Ketia and then uh, stopped a little bit like a cartoon character who's just stepped over the edge of a cliff. 
and tried to put the brakes on and he looked and didn't admire what he'd done and City had it back Ortega plays it forward headed away by Gabriel and out of play for a throw that will be taken on the Manchester City right hand side City have won the last five meetings of these two teams with the Gunners most recent success coming in that FA Cup semi-final we we're talking about in the build-up back in the 1920 season with uh, Henrik Aubameyang scoring a couple of goals that day Arsenal were excellent it was an off day for City that's a mistake from Holding Haaland almost in he might yet be it's an overhead kick a bit of improvisation Tomiyasu will chest it down stop it going in Turner had come out and had done well to intercept the original through ball after the mistake from Holding Haaland having got to that it ricocheted off the keeper tried an overhead kick and he got the direction but not the power on it and Tommy Asu could just drop back in and mop up but Haaland against Holding is a massive problem for Arsenal well that is the match up to be fair because if Arsenal were going to squeeze on any balls that are played long Gabriel one side Tommy Asu they've got height advantage strength advantage on the wide players up the middle of the pitch different matter altogether Haaland and Holding Lewis did well for City winning it back away from Trossard and Fanning Ortega Ortega able to play it forward through the midfield to Lewis again and then out of the penalty area but away from Gundogan and Arsenal win it back Party Shaka back out to Bakaya Saka on the right hand touchline and Ake has gone out there with him it's pulled back to Tommy Yassi Tommy Yassi is 10 yards outside the penalty area just forces Holding to retrace his steps very quickly and Rob Holding ball not a million miles from here on Tame side uh, plays it down towards Gabriel Gabriel to Tierney given away brought through the centre circle now by Rodri for Manchester City 10 minutes gone uh, City with a couple of promising moments and also with the one notable save of the game so far with Ortega denying Tommy Yasu has the feelings of uh, of a mini classic it has the feeling this now of being a matchup between these two that is going to have some hugely significant memorable moments that we're going to see over the next three months or so starting tonight February the 15th the two sides uh, meet in London in the league and then it's the last week of April that the return game here is scheduled for at the moment how important those games will prove to be Jim when you watch these two teams superiorly confident you know exactly what they're trying to achieve the passing lines who should pass it to where where it should go the movements it's fantastic to watch to be fair and if the ball's given away you can sit there and say yeah I see what he was trying to do there you know it's not often the case when you go and watch other games I've got to say well, those are the thoughts of uh, Stuart Pierce, former Manchester City manager and man who scored a goal in the FA Cup final Stone sliding in gets it away from Trossard puts it out for a throw that'll be taken by Tierney uh, this is the first of nine live FA Cup ties that we've got for you over the course of this weekend going into Monday on the TalkSport network and I'll give you the details of some of the others as the half goes on Stones heads it away here for Rico Lewis Lewis playing it forward Rodri back to Akanji hastily laying it uh, behind him and Ortega will clear again Haaland's offside that time couldn't make any attempt to go for the ball along with holding a free header for the Arsenal man flipped by Gundogan and over the head of Saka he can uh, just then walk onto the ball as it bounces back down and Ake will pick it up and City will build from the back with 12 gone at 0-0 yeah when you were saying there about Haaland offside position made no attempt to go for the ball and certainly Rashford's changed that ruling hasn't he in a couple of weeks ago yeah not much Gundogan Grealish Grealish swing it in and well claimed by Turner Mares was the closest to it Turner really close to carrying that out of his penalty area as he got it away the United States international who's record so far in Arsenal colours is exemplary just the one goal conceded this is his sixth game for the club tonight and the the run since he last conceded is just a few seconds short now of seven hours here's Stones Zurich the only side that has scored against him so far Stones to Mares. Mares laying it back to the uh, edge of the penalty area again four Stones and then near the penalty spot will be Ortega that can clear right footed chested down by the retreating Haaland Haaland playing on the turn giving it away for uh, Gundogan and then it'll be brought down in by Thomas Partey but the Arsenal player is down 
as uh, Pardy brought it under control and it's going to be a free kick to the Gunners which they'll take inside the centre circle 13 gone Manchester City nil Arsenal nil possession almost dead level Stu marginally in Arsenal's favour 51-49 they've uh, both had the one shot on target so far it's not a slow burner though it's got a feel of uh, very very entertaining game about it I think it's been a brilliant game uh, it's helped by the away side coming here and putting a high press they're happy to go man for man toe to toe with Manchester City and that's put them right on the front foot I think they, they out of the two teams uh, they probably look the most confident in these uh, opening few minutes in fact I can't remember Jack Grealish touching the ball as yet and we're about 14 minutes in I think Shaka chips the ball for from that free kick it bounces for Saka Saka with uh, an effort that hit a Manchester City player it was a kanji uh, almost an isolated appeal for handball nothing given and rightly so ball cleared out of play for a throw which will be taken by Arsenal on their right hand side you're listening to Manchester City against Arsenal in the FA Cup it's live and exclusive to national radio on Talk Sport with Carling we're made by our mates 18 plus please drink responsibly Gabriel in position just outside the penalty area he's got the ball at his feet now uh, lays it through the centre of the engine room to Granit Xhaka back for Gabriel turning it back for Matt Turner Turner controlling it getting it onto his right foot and then driving it forward quite low and flat Ake coming to meet it Saka there first and Saka plays it back for Fabio Vieira who's another that hasn't really seen too much action with the ball at his feet so far trying to play the re return ball out to Saka and played it behind him and it goes out of play for a throw that will be taken by City midway inside their own half 15 gone it's nil-nil here's Stuart Pearce yeah I would say the difference between the two sides at the moment Arsenal's presser I think I look at it and see it a little bit more aggressive than, than City. City's are, are squeezing on to stop a ball being played through them more so than, look, we're coming after you, we're going to uh, take it off you. The Harlem flag offside again as the ball was uh, played through the midfield and then the uh, first bit of real animation from Mikel Arteta uh, jumping up and down on the edge of the uh, technical area in the ear of assistant referee Constantine Hatsidakis. The decision was made and it's a free kick that the Gunners will take. And Pep's got an outstanding record against Arsenal. It's been well documented. He's faced them 16 times as Manchester City manager. He's won 13 of them. And only won more games as City boss against Burnley than he has against the Gunners. But he has lost two. They both came in the FA Cup. And most recently in the semi-finals. And Arsenal have won the last four FA Cup ties that they played against City. And they've gone on to win the final subsequent to those on the last three occasions the double winning year 1971 and then again in 2017 and most recently in lockdown three years ago all cleared by Turner Akanji just flicking it on through the midfield Rodri Lewis really looks at home in Manchester City's first team he might have a squad number of 82 that belies his uh, or betrays should I say his lack of experience but what an outstanding prospect this young man is just 18 years of age it's amazing all the money you pay for these players and uh, the lift it gives a football club when uh, someone like Foden comes out of the academy or, or this boy yeah Lewis just playing his 15th senior game tonight uh, they've all come this season four Premier League starts for him here's Haaland and here's a typical Manchester City fullback in the way that he'll pick up the ball and then drive into midfield but his starting position when they're in possession often in midfield and that's where he's got it now just to the right of Rodri he's laid it back for a Kanji only a couple of early chances really 17 gone it's nil-nil here on TalkSport Jim Bradford and Stuart Pearce talking through the action at the Etihad Hugh Rosencroft in the chair Salam Adar a stadium producer tonight as the ball is played by Ake fought for Grealish who's uh, forced to retreat back inside his own half to try and influence proceedings and he got caught there by Tommy Yasu who followed him every step of the way and he stayed down Grealish holding his ankle for now I think he's going to be okay uh, without the need for any treatment Manchester City nil 
Arsenal nil. As I mentioned, it's the first of nine games that we've got coming up for you. Tomorrow at 12.30, a choice of listening. It's Accrington against Leeds over on TalkSport 2. Here on TalkSport, Warsaw against Leicester in the Black Country. 11 o'clock build-up ahead of a 12.30 kickoff. Game day live at 2.30. All the goals as they go in from the FA Cup fourth round. And the EFL, of course, as well. 3 o'clock, Fulham Sunderland. Live for you on TalkSport 2. Join me a deep doubt for Preston against Spurs at 6 with Faker Rothers in the chair tomorrow night. And then Manchester United against Reading is an 8 o'clock kickoff also live here on Talk Sport. And that's just tomorrow. More of the same on Sunday and Monday as well. Arsenal drive it forward, but too much on it. Goes through for Ortega, and it's still nil now. Yeah, I think the difference between the two sides, I would like to see City just on occasion, the build-up's really good, no problems there, but every now and then they've looked up and a ball's been on to put behind the back line over a slide ball down the sides of the centre-halves or just a little ball to turn the opposition's defence, just to mix it up a little bit, and they've not done that. They've played everything in front of them. Gundogan, Haaland couldn't play that in front of him he uh, had Gundogan making a third man run behind him and he just tried to flick it with the, the top of his right boot past him it ended up being mopped up by Arsenal got back to Turner cleared by him but not effectively Rodri finds De Bruyne now out towards Mares and his yellowy orange boots back from him to Akanji on the edge of the centre circle for Stones and Arsenal have got everybody back behind the ball here as City make slow progress slow but steady out the ball goes to Mares, headed away from him by Tierney and out for a throw that will be taken on the Manchester City right Tierney one of four former winners of this competition in the Arsenal starting lineup. he's got a couple of Scottish Cups to his name as well from his Celtic days Mares with the ball in the palm of a black gloved right hand takes the throw finds Haaland gets the return ball Mares taking it down towards the byline trying to commit Tierney who didn't bite Mares played it back instead for Lewis Lewis to Akanji 15 yards inside the Arsenal half Gundogan clever but not quite directed accurately enough for the run of Haaland he just tried to play a ball on the half turn round the side of the centre half and the early joy that Manchester City were getting with Haaland against Holding, Arsenal have been able to restrict the number of times that City have been able to get themselves into that position latterly. Arsenal bring it forward again with Saka and Ketia couldn't control it. Vieira can't, plays it forward. Trossard taking on Lewis inside the area, good save. And it didn't quite break for Vieira. Second decent stop of the evening from Ortega. It's Arsenal that have had the two best chances of the game now. One from Trossard, one from Tommy Asu. Still nil-nil the score. Tierney for Shaka. Well, Shaka coming in off that left-hand touchline, the ground where he was set off last season. Back for Gabriel. Gabriel to holding. Now towards Tommy Asu. Play forward again towards Saka. Saka faced up by Nathan Ake. Can't get past his man, and Ake's done well. Dispossesses him. Then feeds Grealish. Grealish bringing it forward 10 yards. Looking long for Haaland. Out comes goalkeeper Turner. He's got to read those because there'll be plenty of them tonight. And he's swept up uh, well on two or three occasions. Gets that one clear, but there's another good run involving Leandro Trossard and forcing a save from Ortega Stewart. Yeah, firstly, that save. Magnificent save. He's made two very good saves, Ortega, already this evening. It shows maybe Arsenal's slight superiority in the game. And that was the first time from City's point of view, ball in behind. And, and the worst you're going to get is to throw in because you've got a game centre forward who's got really good pace and get after things. Ortega thrashes it long again where Haaland 31 goal man can bring it down and feed Grealish Grealish coming in to a central position but took it one touch too far and Thomas Pardew has had a magnificent campaign he's there to sweep up and get it away back for Stones Stones to Akanji Lewis possession 50-50 a few minutes ago but Manchester City are beginning to see more of the ball and restricting the amount of possession that Arsenal are getting in their half particularly Lewis has it again and goes back for Ortega 
Well, Tega controlling it inside the box, brings it to the edge and uh, will prepare to look upfield again. We just had a, a situation there, four on four, right on the halfway line. Manchester City have got the ball against Arsenal. And Arsenal were happy to go really tight and press really hard, even though they're only sort of probably 10 by 10 metres apart from each other, because they know City won't play the ball in behind them. And if you're a defender and you know your winger ain't going to come short and spin behind, it did not encourage you to go tight. So seeing that then should Manchester City just say okay well let's mix it up it's not what we ordinarily do but should we deviate away from plan A and try and play that pass if, if nothing else to keep that Arsenal back line honest what you've got to do is play the way you normally do but have it up your sleeve that look if it's on and there's space in behind toss one in behind now and then because all of a sudden you'll find that the likes of Tierney won't be as brave getting as tight on Mares if he knows there's a chance that ball either might be going in behind four Mares to spin him or alternatively for De Bruyne to burst in there talking to Tini he's got the ball in his hands he's level with the edge of the Manchester City penalty area and he takes a throw 24 gone at 0-0 on Talk Sport holding it's an aerial pass that has uh, misdirected it bounces out away from Saka and over the line from Manchester City throw City have got a brilliant record here in the FA Cup they've won their last nine home games in the competition they've scored at least three in each of those in fact in those nine games they've scored 40 4-0 and conceded only four so that just gives you an idea of the, of the historical trend that Arsenal are going to have to try and buck tonight but as I mentioned earlier they've got a really good record in this fixture in this competition against City Haaland's got it now just puts it at the feet of Rodri. Rodri driving it forward. Mares Arsenal stretch for the first time. They've got a condensed defensive shape back behind the ball. Mares with his trademark cut inside. Trying to get a left footed shot in. It was blocked. Lewis back for De Bruyne. De Bruyne opening it up. Left footed. Caps it. Just why? That was Manchester City at their best. And we had the perfect view of that. Kevin De Bruyne onto his left foot. Just dinked one yard to his left. Curved it but he couldn't quite get it to curve back quite enough to beat Matt Turner. Yeah, it's that type of ball on turnover of possession in the middle band that Mahrez is on to get it out wide and they fed him and he's got the opportunity. All of a sudden, players have got to back off then into their own box and they've got a problem, but De Bruyne has won. He's put plenty of curl on it, but we were right behind it and I still didn't know whether that was in or not. Just went for the crowd reaction at that end of the ground Kevin De Bruyne who uh, lost to Arsenal in uh, both of those semi-finals we were talking about earlier in uh, 17 and 20 he scored in the final in 2019 the only time that City have won it under Pep Fabio Vieira bring it forward here for Arsenal to Trossard Trossard left hand side of the penalty area Lewis making life difficult but he couldn't get the ball off the Belgian who's certainly got a trick up his sleeve and already very much looks at home in Arsenal's red and white Tierney five yards in for the left hand touch line just a little bit further forward than uh, where we sat and he tried to reverse ball down the line for Trossard and it's still a work in progress they're trying to get the lines of communication right down this left with the new boy and it's gone out of play for a goal kick that'll be taken by Ortega I know Trossard's impressed you in a Brighton shirt what do you think of him as an Arsenal signing is it something that you can see do you think he fits in well into this team well I, I think it's so important for Arsenal's lineup to have you've got impact on the right with Saka to have another player that can go past people I think whenever you're playing that you know 4-2-3-1 situation I think it's so important that your wide players have got the ability to go past people if they can't beat them you've got a real real problem and certainly Trossard's prepared to deliver the ball keep possession of the ball to get his team up the pitch and more importantly drive at the goal diagonally in, into the pitch and take people on now he's making his full debut for Arsenal tonight he's actually making his full debut in this competition never previously started an FA Cup tie before off the bench on three occasions hoping that tonight will bring him his first FA Cup goal as well he has scored seven in bright and colours before his move to Arsenal Trossard just showing for the ball into feet from Tierney and then spinning away behind Lewis who lets him go knowing that Rodri will be able to pick him up Tierney throws it down the line looked like a foul throw don't think he had either foot on the ground when it was launched in there Shaka plays it back for Partey 
Party sends it wide out towards the Arsenal right hand side for Bakayo Saka. Pep down on one knee on the uh, edge of the technical area at the moment. Saka takes a stumble under pressure and duress from Ake. And Ake is going to be able to bring it away. Take it out towards the far touchline. The City left as they kick from left to right. Play it for Gundogan. Lovely turn. Got the better of Party who fouled him. One of the rare free kicks that we've seen. And it's a free kick that will be taken by City themselves. 20 yards inside their own half. 0-0 the score. Yes, Ake's dealt with Saka pretty well on a couple of occasions. He's been left one-on-one, -on -one, stays on his feet, he's quick, uses his body quite well. And uh, he, he's probably played more games this year, or seems to be more consistent in his, uh, in his appearances recently, Ake, than uh, in previous times. That's absolutely the case. It's the 22nd appearance of the season today. Arsenal drop back in hurriedly as City look long. Haaland's gone down with his hand on the, or both hands on the back of his head, and because it's a head injury, the referee's obliged to stop it. As the latest installment of the Haaland holding battle, and Gabriel is in there as well, holding, protesting his innocence. So the referee didn't think it was a, a foul. The two players going for the ball. Haaland that tried to back in, and just before he got there, uh, a strong right arm from holding caught him. It just right on the uh, top of the spine of the neck yeah, it's a free kick uh, no sorry it isn't a free kick but it is treatment that uh, Haaland needs but lying about 10 yards outside the penalty area it's goalless here on TalkSport Jim if I was Haaland I'd feel a bit aggrieved there I mean the referee stopped the game twice now for, for head injuries that was a free kick against Haaland he, he's taken an elbow in the side of his head uh, which for me is a free kick to Arsenal now if you if you're VAR on this or whatever, or, or you're the fourth official, you've got to say to the referee, by the way, you've got a couple of these wrong already. That was wrong, and the, the grappling one earlier, which went against Haaland, was wrong as well. In key areas of the pitch, you can't get them wrong as a referee. Yeah, that, that other one, uh, Stuart's talking about, inside the opening 90 seconds of the game, where the freak it went against Haaland, and we certainly felt, with the benefit of a replay that it should have gone the other way and the referee would have had a big decision to make in terms of uh, Rob Holding and the colour of the card he would have received there's so much live sport for you across the Talk Sport Network this weekend that's a side from the nine FA Cup fourth round ties with exclusive radio commentaries across boxing, cricket and American football tomorrow live and exclusive radio commentary of Arta Baturbiev against Anthony Yard for the unified light heavyweight crown that's from 10 o'clock on Talk Sport on Sunday England's men take on South Africa in the second one day international and lost the first today that's live on Sunday from 7.30am on Talk Sport 2 also on Sunday the AFC Championship game between the Bengals and the Chiefs and it's live on Talk Sport 2 from 11 on Sunday night Harland is uh, back on his feet and is um, going to be able to continue no problem and just going through the concussion protocol while he was lying down there but he's okay and play will resume, and it will resume with a drop ball. The referee Tierney had uh, stopped it, seeing that Haaland had gone down uh, with a head problem. Arsenal are in possession, and the ball will be dropped to the feet of Fabio Vieira here. We've played 31 on TalkSport, and it remains Manchester City nil, Arsenal nil. Which of the two managers is the happiest, Stuart Pearce? I would say without doubt, Arteta, I think tactically they've looked very good. Um, the, the only question mark you've got in Arsenal's whole approach is that uh, holding versus um, Haaland matchup, you know, and on two occasions now, from what I can see, in key areas of the pitch, they've had to foul Haaland. They've been fortunate that those fouls, or one's gone the wrong way and one hasn't been seen at all. Uh, Rodrigo uh, gave the ball away as he just tried to play a relatively routine pass out towards the touchline. He uh, gave Arsenal a throw. Arsenal quickly working from the far side of this side, and then Shaka wins a free kick. And he's taking it quickly, back on his feet, put his hand on the ball to stop it. Works it up the line for Trossard. Lewis in strongly. Uh, the officials, I don't think, were too sure which way that had gone. They uh, gave it Arsenal's way for a throw. I'm sure that was correct. Shaka coming back. Gundogan is back there with him. Has to take it down towards his own corner flag and wins it. Rodri in the position he was in hand to make sure that pass was more accurate than the one that had preceded it that he played out wide. And it was, and he's got it back for Ortega. 
And Eddie Nketiah comes and at least pays lip service at putting a, a press on the Manchester City keeper. Forced him into a clearance that wasn't the best. Tierney got to it first. Trossard now taking it down towards the byline. Flashes it in. And it's wide from Nketiah at the near post. And had he let it run, Fabio Vieira was in a decent position behind him. You can't blame Nketiah for making the most of it, getting across his marker at the near post. But he fired it wide. Yeah, good movement from Nketiah there. Coming the back of... Uh central defender who couldn't see him uh, Kanji and to be honest we had good movement flashed in just couldn't get on enough on it to steer it goalward but once again Trossard good wing play good effective wing play getting the ball across the face of goal here's uh, Eddie and Ketia uh, he's lost that immediately to Lewis it was a nice moment Zinchenko has come out to warm up and he got a really warm ovation from the Manchester City supporters Zinchenko back here for the first time since leaving the club here's Akanji and Akanji lays it down towards John Stones Stones for Ortega again it's a night where clear cut goal scoring opportunities have been few and far between didn't necessarily see it panning out like that City again determined to try and invite the Arsenal press and play through it or take with the ball at his feet and Ketia just comes forward gets in his eye line goalkeeper chips it down towards the near touchline for Mares. Stones back for a Kanji and he'll play it forward into the feet of Haaland Haaland looking for the feet of Kevin De Bruyne but missed them from close range out of play for an Arsenal throw We've seen a few misplaced passes from each team in the opening 35 minutes yeah we've had a couple there and once again I can't underestimate the power of Edison playing in this team, you know, because it, he looks up Ortega and he's got reasonable range with his pass, but he can't play a ball in behind Arsenal's back line and make it bounce. And that is a real game changer when you've got a goalkeeper that can do that. See, and he takes a throw and Kedia did really well to come and uh, field it, got in between two City players, then he goes down, but the referee spotted a handball before he did so, and the free kick goes Manchester City's way just outside their own penalty area and you can understand the logic of, of Pep wanting to play Ortega he knows that he has to give him the big match experience remember Ortega was a goalkeeper who got relegated last season when he was uh, playing for Armenia Bielefeld in the Bundesliga and Edison has not played too many FA Cup ties ball four from City now looking for Haaland and holding mops up stepped up and flicked it to his right hand side party clears out of play for a Manchester City throw yeah. Grealish has got the ball twice now to feet and when he's run he's called just caused Tommy Asu a big big problem and uh, what he's got to do is free himself up to get on that ball a little bit more readily if he can ok to Grealish Manchester City nil Arsenal nil ok for De Bruyne oh cleverly done by De Bruyne and then he went down and the referee said no foul and then he does put whistle to the mouth when Saka then he's fouled by Grealish a couple of seconds later and it's a free kick that Arsenal will take but Manchester City seem to have a good cause for a claim for one of their own it was brilliant from De Bruyne uh, Partey beaten then trapped back with him but it was a legitimate challenge according to Paul Tierney who was a lot closer than me Yep, another marginal that have, uh, I think has gone Arsenal's way. I, you know, there weren't a lot in it, I've got to say. Gabriel. Four from him, chested down by Stones. Way from Trossard. Trossard then winning it back from Lewis. Tierney from Ketia. And Ketia in the form of his life. He's got seven goals in his last seven games, including a couple at Oxford in the third round victory that Arsenal had. Gunners work it wide for Vieira. Now Tommy Asu in a more central area can fire one out towards the left. Tierney whacks it back in and almost hits the corner flag. It was a cross that was driven towards the far post, but he got the angle wrong, the pace as well. And it goes innocuously out of play for a goal kick to Manchester City. We're eight minutes from half time. Uh, still nil nil. No extra time tonight. Uh, no penalties. There still replays in the FA Cup fourth round. And not any further than this in the competition these days but there is an FA Cup replay if this one ends 
all square. The last thing that the two managers want is yet another meeting of the uh, of the two sides and have to crowbar it in uh, between now and that first league game between the two on February the 15th. It would almost certainly be played the week before. And there's something I don't think they would like, sort of back-to-back -back games, certainly. Well, you'd rather the replay than going out the cup. I guess Tierney, Mares, Mares, and then Tierney with a slight miss kick. Harlan chasing after it, might get there first. He's flicked it wide, and Tierney raises his right hand by way of apology. Harlan was tracking with the Gabriel, and it bounced a little bit awkwardly after the touch through the midfield. Miss cue completely from Tierney. Harlan gave Gabriel five yards over 15 and still got there first. But having to stretch, got his foot to it and flicked it wide. Yeah, it just shows the power that he's got with that ball in behind. And if that get one or two more balls just going in behind, just to ask questions of the Arsenal back line, I think that will pay dividends. It remains 0-0 for now. Rodri. Battling with Nketiah. Won the second instalment of it. Kanji gets it back to his goalkeeper. Ortega thought about going long but flicked it out towards Stones Stones very nearly dispossessed by Trossard who smacked the ground with the, the palm of his hand in frustration then it's worked back towards Ortega and Ortega collides with Nketiah right on the edge of the penalty area there's no foul no claims from Nketiah that it should have been Arsenal done well to win the second ball with Shaka. Trossard has got Rodri with him and he's facing the wrong way Leandro Trossard Mares comes back and digs it clear and gets it out of harm's way to find Kevin De Bruyne. But Trossard asking some pretty pertinent questions down this Arsenal left-hand side at times. Grealish has it now. Grealish driving. Flicks it away between two Arsenal players. He's found Haaland. Haaland can turn. And he too will drive. And towards the left-hand side of the penalty area for Kevin De Bruyne. Pulled back by him. Rodri to Gundogan to De Bruyne again. Grealish takes over. Right-footed too deep for Haaland. And it curves away. Out of play very tamely in the end for a goal kick to us and we're into the final five minutes of the first half. Yeah, Holland unfortunate there. He's pulled out beyond Gabriel and waiting for the long ball to come over to the far post. Then he, he sort of got a little bit impatient thinking the ball wasn't going to come. He's come inside Gabriel and then they floated the ball in to the far post. The life of a centre forward. The life of a centre forward, but he's... Uh, used to being on the end of the good service he has scored in 12 of his last 13 home games so in his last 13 matches here he scored 22 goals the only game in that run that he hasn't scored in was the home defeat to Brentford which remains the only game the City have lost here this season they dropped points against Everton they've won the rest in all competitions 13 out of 15 but Harlan's numbers, however you paint them, are bordering on miraculous. He's now got 150 goals in 147 games since he left Norway. And 207 for club and country by the age of 22. I hate to think how many he might end up getting. Has a really had a glimmer of an opportunity so far tonight. They'll play him in now and will take with another ball that's uh, just through the midfield and then holding clearly and cynically has stopped him and he gets a yellow card. Harlan came to meet it, he laid it off and turned, spun and holding knew that he was past him and he almost rugby tackled him to the ground. Well, that's the third time that he's failed him in, on my eye in this game and he's been booked for that one and to be honest with you, he probably could have been booked for the other two as well. Holding by name holding by nature and first gra grappling by nature <laughs> first yellow card and it goes Rob Holding's way this is first of the campaign ball out of play for an Arsenal throw Vieira did well to come to meet it flicked it on but Nketi was offside free kick will be taken by City midway between the edge of the penalty area and the halfway line such an open start the first 10 minutes uh, an engaging spectacle it has slowed down a little bit uh, since then 
as uh, a few verbals are going on in the midfield it's Gundogan that is uh, in the ear of the referee he said he was going to take a free kick and then the referee blew his whistle and uh, now has a very animated discussion with Ilkay Gundogan uh, but no yellow card for descent or anything and play does resume with that Manchester City free kick Ortega with a couple of smart saves uh, the second of them to deny Trossard was a good one He's got the ball at his feet again in the penalty area. He, he just invites all the time and Kedia to come to meet it. Now it's launched forward long by Ortega. Haaland backing into holding. Arsenal clear and then give it away with a mistake in the midfield from Vieira. And it's out of play for a throw that Lewis will take for Manchester City with his feet almost on the edge of the technical area as he does so. Back it goes for Stones. And Stones in turn to his goalkeeper Ortega. A couple of minutes to go to half time. There'll be couple of minutes to stop his time at the very least after the uh, treatment that Harlan picked up looked like a slight push on a kanji still weird to see somebody other than Fernandinho wearing 25 for Manchester City but it is a kanji these days is Rodri just on the edge of his own penalty area and he's given it away Grealish wanted the ball into feet and didn't get it Arsenal play it for quickly Akanji doing well to stop Nketia and then staying firm in the challenge before calmly knocking it away to find Rodri who heaves the cry of man on Saka was bearing down on him Rodri turns it wide Morris chasing after it and the ball took a, a real skittish bounce and just uh, leapt off the surface ahead of Mares, and he stood no chance of being able to keep it in and it's out of play for an Arsenal throw down by their own corner flag. Almost at half-time, Stuart Pearce. And still we wait for the first uh, truly significant moment of the night. It's nil-nil. Yeah, we do. As I say, a couple of good saves at one end from Ortega. He's done pretty well. And a couple of near misses, let's say, from Haaland. And a couple of decisions, potentially, that were a little bit costly to Haaland as well from the referee. But... Um, it's, it's all to play for you really couldn't call this one I think Arsenal will be delighted with the amount of possession they had their tactical approach to the game and you know I'm fresh from watching Manchester United and knowing full well whenever they're, they're defending and they lose possession of the ball you know on the turnover within two or three passes someone's running in behind your back line or that's what they're looking for City need to find a little bit of that to go with their possession play Yes, yeah, Stuart Fresh from watching Manchester United in the 3-0 Carabao Cup semi-final first leg win against Nottingham Forest. The second leg of that coming your way on Wednesday. By that stage, uh, the winners of that, and it is Manchester United in the box seat, will know who they're going to be playing because the second leg of the Newcastle-Southampton semi-final live from Tyneside Tuesday night with a 7 o'clock build-up ahead of an 8 o'clock kickoff. At St James Park, John Adrian Durham and the team for that on Tuesday. We are in two minutes of added time at the end of the first half, but uh, the two minutes haven't really started yet uh, because John Stones is down injured. I uh, just wonder whether this might potentially be a ha it's like hamstring problem that he's picked up. Ake looks really concerned. So too the uh, City medical staff as they lean over him and uh, they administer treatment and Ake looks over towards the technical area with gritted teeth. A uh, suggestion that this uh, might not be too good for John Stones. City send the substitutes out to warm up. They've got Ruben Diaz in terms of uh, centre-halves on the bench. Uh, Emmerich Laporte as well. And we've seen Carl Walker, the player, centre-half in a four in the last two, three weeks or so, which he uh, did in that 2-0 loss at Southampton in the League Cup quarter-final. So plenty of options for Manchester City if Stones can't continue, but... This would be a blow for Manchester City if they lose their number five just before half-time of the injury. Yeah. It's looking very dubious that it'll carry on. I hope I'm wrong. The, the fact he was just sort of lying on his back with his knees up to his chest, not wanting to move that hamstring. Well, he's back on his feet now. Yeah, change. And uh, he uh, makes his way down towards this uh, touchline, but no risks can be taken nor should they be and so Manchester City will make a change in first half stoppage time and there'll be a, an ovation for Stones as he leaves the field John Stones uh, a member of the Everton side that lost to Arsenal in the quarterfinals of this competition back in 2014 a couple of homemade signs uh, requesting his shirt 
uh, being held up by young City fans uh, between us and the touchline. He hasn't seen those. He'll uh, make his way straight down the tunnel for treatment and Emmerich Laporte is the player who's getting stripped and ready for action and he'll be on at the next break in play but I think the referee is uh, going to try and encourage Manchester City to restart with a throw Laporte's not ready yet and so Lewis uh, takes the throw uh, Mares uh, getting the loose ball returns possession sportingly to Arsenal and Laporte is now ready to come on uh, Rob Jones the fourth official just having a word with him he'll be on at the next break in play yeah with two minutes to go to half time and uh the Pulse got his shirt, found his shirt in the bag, put his shirt on. He's, now he's getting his pads on. Now he's tying his laces. And I think we'll have the half-time whistle before he gets on the pitch at this rate. Yeah, every chance. The ball has gone out of play for a throw. And, uh, yeah, he's OK. He's going to be able to come on. So Laporte on for Stones. And that's Manchester City's first change. Uh, Stones going off with a, a hamstring problem. So a Kanju will shift to the right of the two centre-halves to accommodate Laporte's arrival. And the throw taken by Arsenal finds Gabriel. Gabriel hooking it forward. It's nil-nil coming up the half-time. Lewis getting it away from Tierney. Now Pep just acts as the uh, ball boy. Controls it. Well, controls it after a fashion. And hands the ball to Gabriel who can take a throw for Arsenal. It's then uh, thrown up the line underarm so that Tierney can take it from where the ball went out of play. Nil-nil seconds left in the first half and Ketia trying to make the most of a stumble by Lewis has been able to hook the ball in but he's curved straight behind the goal and out for a goal kick that'll be taken by Ortega so what's the gist of the two halftime team talks Stu? Um, for me and, and, and Manchester City don't play this way but I, I think they've got to probably try and mix it up with Arsenal and get them turned on occasion I'm not talking about regularly I'm talking about on occasion maybe turn over a possession in that midfield band and look for that ball in behind and really it's a case of isolating the Arsenal defenders uh, Grealish has got the beat in the Tommy Asu he's shown that on a couple of occasions Haaland has got his opponent on a booking that's the match up that's the problem well, at half-time in the third round time, Manchester City had already got the job done against Chelsea. Far from it tonight, against the one side above them in the Premier League. Half-time, it's Manchester City nil, Arsenal nil. So, Saliba for holding, and Lukonga for party. The double change made by Arsenal at half-time. We're back underway. Manchester City going from right to left. Light blue shirts with the dark blue trim. White shorts, and the Gunners in their famous red and white well, the ball is back for Stefan Ortega who made a couple of important saves for Manchester City in that first half as Saliba and Haaland involved in their first skirmish uh, since that Saliba came on a little bit of shirt pulling going on there Tommy Asu chasing after a, a ball that was laid down to the City left Grealish though was offside and it will be a free kick which will be taken by Arsenal on the right hand side of their penalty area City lining up Ortega in goal Lewis Akanji, Laporte who came off for Stones right at the end of the first half because of a hamstring problem and Ake then Rodri and Gundogan Mares De Bruyne and Grealish and Haaland Arsenal Turner in goal Tomiyasu Saliba Gabriel and Tierney Vieira Lukonga and Xhaka Saka and Ketia and Trossard and Eddie and Ketia going up for the ball with Emmerich Laporte the other number 14 on the field City clear it and De Bruyne giving chase as it's laid back for Turner Turner down for Saliba on the right hand side of the Arsenal back line for a moment he finds Tommy Yasu on the touch line Tommy Yasu forced to take a touch back down towards his own dead ball lies under pressure from Grealish Tommy Yasu playing it into the corner flag and has been given as a goal kick I wasn't expecting the referee to point for a goal kick I thought it was going to be a corner so too did Jack Grealish and the Manchester City fans who had the perfect view but right, referee Tierney was closer than I it is a goal kick they've taken it short and back it goes for Turner long ball four from him Ake beating Saka to it heads it out of play for a throw alongside me Jim Proudford here at the Etihad is Stuart Pearce yep yeah, uh, we'll have to check whether referee Tierney's got the same Scottish drawl as uh Tierney the left back I don't know whether they're related there's been a couple of marginals that have certainly angered the Manchester City fans and that that being another one of them 
And here is Kieran Tierney giving chase down the Arsenal left-hand side. And Paul Tierney, the referee, points for an Arsenal throw. Correctly. Gunners getting bodies forward towards the edge of the penalty area here. It's nil-nil. Turner hasn't had a, a worthwhile save to make We're on a day that Manchester City, I think, so far have only had the one shot on target. Arsenal working back for Saliba. Saliba playing it forward, and Ketty comes back from an offside position. Referee says play on. Laporte got it. Side footed it forward, finding Mares to Gundogan. Gundogan forced to retrace his steps and go back inside his own half for a moment. Plays in Ake. Uh, Ake, the dreadlock Dutchman, forward towards Grealish. And Grealish uh, given a shove off the ball from Tomiyasu once he played the ball. And it's a free kick which will be taken by Manchester City. A uh, look of uh, incandescence from Grealish and uh, one of chorister like innocence from Tommy Yasu. Free kick given. Laporte to his goalkeeper, Ortega. Thought about going long first time, does so at the second time of asking. Tommy Yasu comes back, does well. A bounce of the ball and then got a cushion header back to his goalkeeper away from Haaland. Still nil nil. Yeah, this is a say, no doubt Arsenal, I think by far the. Uh, the happier of the two camps at this moment in time. Yeah. But once again, still in the balance there. So both teams tactically so well set up to, to nullify each other. The press is good from both teams. And they're forcing goalkeepers to play long straight balls. And that, that just puts the uh, defenders to be in, uh, in the ascendancy. And Lewis playing it back for Akanji. Manchester City have won their last seven fourth round ties. They were last beaten at this stage back in 2015 when they lost 2 0 to Middlesbrough here. They have only been eliminated from two of the last 18 fourth round ties that they played. Arsenal lost their last one, which came against Southampton a couple of years ago. Lost the Championship side Forest last year. And Forest then in the Championship, should I say. So they lost their last FA Cup tie against Premier League opposition. They were to be eliminated by Manchester City for the first time in 12 years. They've lost successive FA Cup ties to Premier League opposition. Such a good record in this competition over the recent past. Arsenal, they've won it four times in the last nine years. One of those, an Arteta's watch back in 2020. Saliba. Well, as a half-time substitute, pokes the ball away from Haaland and lays it back for Gabriel. Gabriel looking long, trying to bring Trossard into it. City mop up, Rodri back for a Kanji. Tierney does well. Steps up from the defensive line, heads it down for Trossard. Trossard to Shaka, back for Lakonga. Lakonga a little bit awkward as he tried to control it. The ball ran away from him. City might be able to break. De Bruyne, he's got Haaland making a run ahead of him. He's trying to play him in. Haaland bustling, trying to get in between two Arsenal players who converge and close out the space. And between them, we're able to sweep up. Yeah, Rick, when De Bruyne is driven with the ball there, he's waiting for the pole waiting for a defined run from Haaland Haaland eventually made that run but two Arsenal players Tommy Asu being one of them just come and converged on this space City come again it's Gundogan Haaland Saliba flicks it away and a good start Gundogan back for Grealish Grealish to Ake nil-nil six gone in the second half on Talk Sport Grealish again coming to the bottom left-hand corner of the penalty area Tomiyasu shadowing his every move but not diving in, not committing himself and just watching Grealish play it back behind square Gundogan leaving it for Kevin De Bruyne De Bruyne left footed ball curved inside the penalty area Turner came out, dived, punched it clear with his left fist and he comes towards Lewis exchanging passes with Mares on the Manchester City right a bit more purposeful from Manchester City at the beginning of this second half Rodri's got it near the edge of the centre circle. Plays it back inside to Laporte. Laporte to Lewis. De Bruyne back out to the right-hand side. Lewis continuing his run. Haaland's in there, but Lewis can't find him. And he fizzes across straight into the side netting. Promising position, but it quickly came to nothing. Yeah, really good play there by City. Good interchange. And then it was just a great run. Kept his run, timed it really well. And when Lewis got to the byline, or just before it, he's trying to pull the trigger. No need. 
take a touch, plenty of time on his hand. A little bit of an experience there from him. Has scored one goal in his Manchester City career. He netted against Sevilla, which made him the youngest City player to score on his full Champions League debut for the club. That remains the only goal he scored so far. It's Gundogan heading Turner's ball back into Arsenal territory. And Grealish watches it run out of play after a touch from Vieira, who just got caught on the top of the foot there, Fabio Vieira. It's going to be a throw which will be taken by City's Nathan Ake, and Vieira just hobbles away. He's going to be all right. Laporte, back to his goalkeeper, Ortega, just nudges it back across the face of Eddie Nketiah. Uh, but the whistle's gone. What's the referee seen here? Grealish has gone down on the near touchline. The problem is an injury for Turner upfield, and he's holding his left shoulder as he uh, as he just strained his shoulder ligaments in that Superman style punching clearance. By the look of it, yeah, it was at full stretch there. Just extended the uh, the left hand for a, a punch above his head, and I think there was a collision potentially with one of his defenders just no as I say we watched the replay no collision at all but maybe the landing has just jarred him slightly possibly just overextending the uh, the retainer cuffs he come out as well shoulder ligaments a very painful injury you sound as though you're talking through experience here I, my friend I, I am I mm, thought so yeah not uh, not sporting experience Cakey inexperience, maybe well, stretching got, over the counter. I have plenty of that, as you know, but uh, <laughs> to be fair, I've, uh, I've never been so ill-prepared that I've needed to stretch for one. Yeah, these days, they've always been <laughs> They're always at hand. As you know. <laughs> Fell down a hill as an 18-year-old. It was icy. My body went, put my hand down to stop myself. My body kept going down oh, the hill. That's not pleasant. And my hand on my shoulder didn't. Um, so, yeah, that's my experience. Long time ago, but it hurts. Yeah. Uh, he's back on his feet. And play is going to resume with a Manchester City awarded drop ball. Uh, just dropped by Tierney to, uh, referee Tierney, sorry, to Laporte. Yeah. And uh, it'll be played back out. So Turner's going to be able to continue. Uh, Ramsdale uh, have been preparing for action. Alvarez is going to be coming on for Manchester City shortly. They're in possession now with Maris taking inside the penalty area. De Bruyne on the overlap. Good save again from Turner. Diving down. Got a strong hand to block the cross. And Arsenal will be able to get it clear. And Kanji, though, can pick it up on the right-hand side. Back for Lewis. De Bruyne. To Mares. And the volume picks up from the Manchester City fans around us. They've been encouraged by... A brighter start to the second half. Arsenal very much hanging in there. No undue alarms for the Gunners up to this point. And it remains nil-nil with ten gone in the second half. The City will bring it forward again. And Mares faced up by Trossard. Turns back inside and then checks. And waits for the run outside him. He used that as the decoy. Found it in too deep for Haaland who went up for it and collided with Turner who almost took exception to it. Uh, but they're both back on their feet and they've both got smiles on their face and Haaland puts an arm around Turner's shoulders by way of apology for the uh, collision and play will restart with a goal kick but only after a double Manchester City change and they're going to make it now no and the next break in play Alvarez coming on and Walker is going to be coming on as well Ake heads it away past Saka Pep still uh, got his uh, arm around the waist of Walker and he's talking him through what he expects Alvarez has had his instructions the Pep really animated and uh, talking Carl Walker through it so the double change will be made when the ball next goes out of play Carl Walker another member of the side that won this competition for Manchester City four years ago Ball cleared by Gabriel. Trossard waves the left leg at it, but can't bring it under control. Manchester City have had more possession in this second half than they had in the first. They've got it now with Rodri going back. Laporte took a touch which went down towards his own dead ball line and it was a really good pressure from Nketiah, good intensity about it and Kanji will pick it up, he'll try and turn away from Trossard over on that far side and it is a Manchester City ball and Trossard looks up to the heavens with mock exasperation at the decision that has gone against him. So City's first change, Mares off and Alvarez on for him. 
And is the second change going to be Walker for Lewis? Yes, it is. So Walker for Lewis, Alvarez for Mares. Yeah, I think Alvarez might offer him something that just might be an individual that's going to come off the line a little bit and dart in between the fullbacks. The way City play, they're like Mares wide one side, Grealish wide the other. And I think both fullbacks or a centre half sliding out to deal with them are, are, are quite comfortable with that. They know where they are. I think his movement might might be something that might unhinge him slightly. Well, Manchester City play with a 4-4-2 formation in the 6-0 win against Nottingham Forest here, where they had Haaland and Alvarez starting that day. Uh, they had Foden and Bernardo Silva in the wider positions. Uh, they are reverting to pretty much the 4-4-2 here. Uh, to start with, the offside flag is up. Haaland going through the middle. And he's got Alvarez uh, off his shoulder, really, almost as a 10, I suppose, with uh, De Bruyne going out to the right and Grealish to the left. But it is ostensibly going to be 4-4-2 from here on in for Manchester City. Nil-nil the score. Saliba playing it forward. And Kedia going up for it. It might break. It does break for Fabio Vieira. And he had a snapshot left-footed volley that flew well wide. Well, I'm not sure Vieira needed to take that first time. I really didn't. And Ketty has done well getting first contact on it. Just a, a sort of back header, if you like. And as it fell to Vieira on the edge of the box, I think he had more time than he uh, gave himself credit for. City will bring it forward. Haaland watching the ball to the feet of De Bruyne. And then he turns and runs. De Bruyne angles a high ball out towards Grealish, but Tommy Asu easily beat him to it. Laconga picking it up in the midfield. Just invited the challenge from Rodri. It was fouled. Free kick that Arsenal will take. You're listening to Manchester City against Arsenal. It's in the FA Cup. It's live on Talk Sport with Carling. We're made by our mates. 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. Is that a change you'd have made going 4 4 2 for Manchester City from here? Um, I don't think there's any hardship in it, if I'm being honest with you. I think, it, you know, the two players out wide left Haaland very isolated sometimes that was a good thing you know when holding was on he caused him a problem I think to have someone in and around him to attract the other centre half towards Alvarez might just help Haaland in this situation 31 goals for Haaland so far this season 9 for Alvarez who did score against Chelsea in the only FA Cup ties ever played this, this might be the repercussion of that, though. I think they might get Tierney out because uh, De Bruyne is the one expected to play the right side of midfield, and I think he'll naturally come in a little bit, and that might just free up Tierney to get forward on that side for Arsenal. So Fabio Vieira's got the ball on the, the right-hand side of central midfield for Arsenal. Plays it back for Tommy Asu. Saliba into the uh, feet of Granny Xhaka in the midfield. Back for Fabio Vieira again. And Fabio Vieira given a, a little shove. Almost a reminder off the ball by Jack Grealish. Uh, Grealish then just nudges Lokonga once the ball had gone. Lokonga playing it back to his goalkeeper. They're playing out from the back with Saliba. Saliba turning away from Alvarez. Able to play it through the midfield. But it's a fight ball. It was won by Laporte. Gunduan playing it forward. The diminutive Alvarez. A short of stature. Big of heart. Plays it forward to the edge of the penalty area. Gunduan just given a, a little nudge by Trossard who came across. So his touch was heavy. And he goes out of play for a goal kick that will be taken for Arsenal. And... It almost seems a daft thing to say with half an hour still to go and players of the quality that we've seen. This does have the feeling of a match that could end nil-nil. It, it certainly does. As I say, we've had not really too many indicators early on in this uh, second half to suggest that either team's going to break the deadlock. I wonder whether Odegaard could be that man. So three shots on target in the game. They were all in the first half where... 16 minutes into the second half of Manchester City haven't had a single attempt since the break either on or off target Ake clearing his lines gets it away it's been a really good measured well disciplined Arsenal performance Saka playing it forward City having to play it knocked away by Laporte from Nketia how he's grown and matured over the uh, the last month six weeks or so what a fantastic answer he's been to Arsenal's problems with the injury to City old boy Gabriel Jesus 
Lukonga playing it for Fabio Vieira trying to cut inside Ake stuck out a right foot and flicked it off the island out of play for an Arsenal throw Saka will come across to take it it's nil nil 62 gone I'll tell you what Saka I think has been Arsenal's main threat over the last couple of months he, he's been a real handful but tonight I've got to say I think Aki's played him really really well it's one of the quieter games he's had up to this stage and I think a lot of credit's got to go down to Aki for that Saliba Ford over halfway to uh, Bakayo Saka Gundogan flicks it Ake heads it Rodri Haaland Gundogan Ford here for Alvarez De Bruyne making a run in an advanced position Alvarez trying to find him it's uh, come off Gabriel and he will just uh, flick it out of play for a throw not convinced we've had a single corner in the game as yet no we haven't and we're not too far short of the midway stage of the second half that's gone out of play for a throw which Grealish will take for Manchester City only about six yards from the corner flag drops it at the feet of Alvarez straight back to Grealish got himself back on side Alvarez but behind Ake for Laporte the easy ball is Akanji to his right hand side he does uh, play it belatedly to Akanji who will just come forward calmly through the midfield now Alvarez trying his luck hits the post back for Grealish Grealish inside the penalty area twisting doesn't put a right foot in crossing tries to get in on his left plays it back for Ake 1-0 to Manchester City Alvarez striking the frame of the goal and it bounced back out Grealish's work was excellent Ake's finish with his weaker foot was crisp and inside the bottom right hand corner and in the battle of the top two in the Premier League it's the chasers rather than the pace setters that lead in the FA Cup Manchester City 1 Arsenal 0 well there's been very little build up to this pressure wise but Alvarez a fantastic effort off the post Grealish has done well there attracted two players set up Ake and we were just saying how good Ake's defensive work's been today and he pops up with a goal to break the deadlock Nathan Ake with the goal a man who's actually in the Watford side but knocked Arsenal out in the quarterfinals famously seven years ago and Ake with a goal that breaks the deadlock only his sixth in Manchester City colours and 1-0 is the score tell you what he steered that in really really well I think he was under pressure he was getting shut down so he didn't have a full swing at it he just guided it with a bit of curling to the far corner Arsenal will make a double change on the back of it Martinelli for Trossard is the first change and Zinchenko for Tierney is the second so Zinchenko for Tierney straight swap at left back Martinelli for Trossard, straight swap ahead of them on the left wing. Double change made by Arsenal. 25 minutes to go. As Manchester City 1, Arsenal 0. Nathan Ake, the unlikely man to break the deadlock. That's a big ovation you can hear for Zinchenko. Such a popular man in these parts. Man who made nearly 130 appearances for Manchester City plays against him for the very first time today here's Tommy Yasu Tommy Yasu turning for Arsenal and the game you would imagine will open up significantly now that the deadlock has been broken it's been broken by Manchester City's Dutch defender Nathan Ake shackles ball inside the area and Ketia nearly 1-1 straight away we now have the first corner of the night and we very nearly had an equaliser and Kenny are darting towards the edge of the six-yard box. A teasing ball in from that left-hand side. It needed defending. It was a brilliant touch from Laporte that just squeezed it away from Nketiah to stop him getting the equaliser just moments after Rake's opener. Well, fantastic defending at full stretch and a bit, it's fair to say. And he's just got a touch on it as Nketiah is just about to unload behind him and guide it into the net. And Ketia amongst those waiting inside the penalty area. It's a very congested six-yard box. The first corner of the night is going to be taken by Bakayo Saka from the Arsenal right. It's a left-footed in-swinger. It's very deep and straight into the hands of Ortega. So how's the Arsenal game plan changed, Stuart Pearce? Finding themselves a goal down with a quarter of the game remaining. 
Well, I think potentially Zinchenko coming on, who, who likes to get forward and, and on occasion underlap as well, might get a bit of freedom with the Bruyne playing in a sort of that 4-4-2-ish role, if you like, you know, even though Alvarez is, is playing slightly deeper. That might be a get out and an overload against Walker. Saliba for Gabriel. And here is the blonde-haired Ukrainian Zinchenko. Long left-footed ball four from him. It's a peach of a delivery from the left flank way over to the right. Killed by Saka. Saka for Tomiyasu. Tomiyasu running towards the edge of the penalty area here for Arsenal. Back he goes for Bukayo Saka again. He's ten yards outside the box. Still he goes. That's a good ball as well. Back out towards Martinelli. Left-hand side of the penalty area. Hooked in by him. Laporte with another important defensive contribution. Heads the cross away. Tomiyasu back for Fabio Vieira. Vieira turning it through the midfield for the tall Lekonga back for Tommy Yasu Tommy Yasu's ball in and Kedia tries to bring it down it fell behind him and City clear completely different field of the game now it's more open there's a sharpness about the challenges it's being played at a better tempo and Arsenal having all the possession since they went behind and Haaland's just been nutmegged which the Arsenal fans enjoyed Fabio Vieira brings it forward. Nathan Ake's goal, 1-0 Manchester City on Talk Sport. Are the Premier League leaders heading out? They'll be the 10th Premier League side eliminated. With 31 still in the competition after tonight. Zinchenko. Forward towards Shaka. Our next live FA Cup action for you tomorrow. The build-up starts at 11 here on Talk Sport on Game Day Live. Leicester making the trip from the East Midlands to the West to take on League 2 side Walsall Shaka ball inside the penalty area Grealish comes back covers it really well knocks it back for Ake who can clear long ball four from the City back line headed down by Saliba Lokonga Shaka Arsenal in the mood here Martinelli offside and some respite for Manchester City who know they're in a game they've not been parked up against the ropes since Ake's goal but it has been all Arsenal since the deadlock was broken yeah just looking on that left hand side of Arsenal they, they've got a numbers overload there against City because De Bruyne has tucked in slightly and when Zinchenko goes he's not always forthright in coming back and tracking his man uh, and that's allowing probably a, a four against three scenario Turner comes out and sweeps up after Haaland trying to spin inside the Arsenal centre halves. Free kick has been given against the giant Norwegian. That's the free kick that the Gunners will take inside their own half. Lekonga. Lekonga out towards Zinchenko. Manchester City fans just reminding their Arsenal counterparts that uh, despite the league table as it stands at the moment, it is City that own the silverware for now. And they're intent on retaining it. Saka. Gabriel. Grealish winning it back. Poking it forward. Haaland letting it run across him. Haaland's got Alvarez to his left. De Bruyne to his right. Kevin De Bruyne pulling it back. Rodri. Ilkay Gundogan. Ake forward in support. Back for the German again. And Gundogan will lay it back for Rodri behind him. Akanji invited forward. Manchester City just glad to be able to get a touch of the ball, string some passes together after four or five minutes of Arsenal pressure. Ake into the feet of Grealish. Grealish works it back for Ake again. Erdegaard's going to be coming on very shortly for Arsenal. And it will be their final change. And captain about to arrive. Haaland flicking it on for Manchester City. Gabriel's dealt with him pretty effectively and the loose ball drops Saliba's way and Gabriel very quickly back in position to show for the pass will work it out towards the Arsenal left-hand side for Zinchenko 1-0 Manchester City lead Nathan Ake with the goal Lekonga Lekonga who came on for party at half-time played out towards Martinelli Martinelli faced up by Walker goes back for Zinchenko in a more central area Zinchenko through the centre circle and back inside his own half for a moment for Saliba and it's Arsenal's turn to be able to string the passes together and dozens of them 
but they're not making any forward progress really at the moment Stuart City with a, a regimented defensive shape cutting them out now they mix it up a bit, the Gunners work it wide towards Saka, Saka on the right hand side taking on Ake, getting it across and Ketia making a darting run, couldn't quite beat Laporte to it, he came from late and tried to get across him in the near post area but couldn't quite. Herdegaard for Vieira, you would imagine the change will be for Arsenal and it's imminent. And Manchester City will bring Bernardo Silva on presently as well, he's uh, just taking his tracksuit bottoms off. Yeah. Is Laporte. I think Silva coming on, they'll want to dominate the ball now and try to kill the momentum of Arsenal and kill the momentum of the game by their possession work, City. And once again, you know, Aki, uh, Saka's got a fight tooth and nail to, to push it on the outside and get across across the face of goal. But the one thing he can't do, he can't get the other side of Aki. And you've seen him time and time again this season in the Premier League get beyond defenders, beat defenders and open the goal up. He's not been able to do that at all tonight and credit to Aki for it. Now he's certainly going to be one of the candidates for the, uh, the man of the match. Man with the goal. His uh, team with a clean sheet against their name and the Dutchman's played a big part in that as well. But still, 16 minutes of normal time to go. City trying to work it long again. Gabriel did well. Just stopping Haaland having a clean run towards the end of the long ball. And that allowed Turner the chance to quickly come out of his penalty area and clear. That goal that uh, he conceded the first in 470 minutes since he shipped his only other one in Arsenal colours against Zurich. Well, Arsenal have made the change and Saka is the man that has come off for Erdegaard. And De Bruyne is being replaced by Bernardo Silva. But Erdegaard for Saka, not what I saw coming. No, no, nor me. But the one thing it does tell you, it tells you how well Aki's done, I think, you know. Um, the, you know, the match-up tonight has been dominated by Ake and uh, credit to him for that. So De Bruyne coming off and he'll be replaced by somebody else who's on that 2019 FA Cup winning side for City. Bernardo Silva who's gone 24 without a goal coming into tonight. Much more to his game than the raw numbers alone. Uh, the bearded Portuguese uh, just uh, untucks his shirt having made his arrival and uh, stands near the edge of the D. The ball is in the hands of Grealish. It's going to be a throw which will be taken on the, the Manchester City left. Grealish poking it away from Gundogan. Shaka playing it forwards, claiming there was a handball by Bernardo Silva. A referee Tierney well placed said no. Bernardo Silva works it back. Good ball retention from him. Erdegaard chasing after Ake. And Ake can calmly get it back to the back line. Forward he goes from Laporte to Rodri to Ake to the retreating Grealish facing the wrong way for a moment under pressure from Vieira. Ake has it. Did he control it before it went out of play? Uh, hit Javier Vieira and then went out of play. So it's a Manchester City throw. And the Arsenal man thought that it should have been a, a gunner's ball because it was already out. Ake, no hurry for the restart. 14 to go. Manchester City 1. Arsenal 0. Throw up the touchline. Helped on by Haaland. Goes up for a second aerial challenge with Tommy Asu. And then Fabio Vieira shoved Grealish over as the pair waited for the ball to arrive. And there's a dirty look from the Brummy in Fabio Vieira's direction. And it is a free kick that Manchester City will take. 76 gone, Stuart. And Arsenal have a quarter of an hour or so's with the playing time to find an equaliser and stay in the cup. Yeah, that little bit of momentum that they had Arsenal pressing forward, pinning uh, City in for for a couple of minutes has diminished a little bit and uh, City are just keeping enough possession of the ball to keep Arsenal at bay at present and Fabio Vieira has come out of the right hand side for Arsenal and that's the way that they've shuffled things around with the change they're taking Saka off so Vieira's moved wide and Erdegaard's playing it in his usual position and then Manchester City bring the ball forward with Bernardo Silva who's fouled by Xhaka and it's a City ball over on the far touchline they lead 1-0. Nathan Ake with the goal. The City looking for a third straight win in all competitions and a tenth in 14. Arsenal have won 22 out of 27 this season. And just such an extraordinarily good campaign. 
stretch past the, the halfway stage for Manchester City at the halfway stage for Arsenal in their league season. And February the 15th is the date in the diary that everyone's got a big red circle around when these two play each other again. Free kick bent inside the penalty area, just too high for Rodri. Comes out for Alvarez. Alvarez hooking it in. And Turner got uh, another bang as he punched that one away uh, with his left hand and got it clear. Zinchenko back inside his own penalty area for Gabriel. Over on the far touchline, Gabriel Martinelli then plays it forward and Zinchenko looking for Laconga has given it away. City get it back with Laporte, finding Walker. Walker back for Emmerich Laporte again. 12 to go. Manchester City a goal to the good. You're with Talk Sport. Jim Proudford and Stuart Pearce talking through the action here as the Premier League leaders are getting ever closer to elimination. Back he goes for Ortega. Ortega to Laporte. Uh, Manchester City few more adept than them at just being able to keep possession for possession's sake and run time off the clock. Yeah, normally they keep possession but there's still this flood of going forward. I, I get the impression that they're not too intent on getting another one if it comes all well and good but the intention of this possession work is really to starve Arsenal with the ball. City been in the semi-finals in each of the last three seasons including once by Arsenal. We've got to at least the semis in five of the last six seasons. And will they be the first name of the last 16? Looking that way at the moment, here's Grealish. Coming in off the left flank for Manchester City. Slows it down to walking pace. Tries to commit Tomiyasu who didn't buy anything there. And Rodri, after the ball was played for him, just clips a high aerial pass forward that Arsenal can clear. And there's a shot by Enketia. Uh, the uh, referee says play on City working it back maintaining possession going deeper for Ortega Ortega again and Ketia pretty close to him by the time Ortega cleared Haaland trying to hold it up couldn't do so it's uh, cannoned off him he's found it difficult playing yeah. with his back to goal against the centre halves I mean we, we yeah. talked at length about the holding battle but in the second half he's had little change no and as I say got caught in two minds there whether to use his head or back off and in the end he sort of it's dropped and he's ducked his head down to try and cushion it to someone he's been a little bit scruffy with his hold up play tonight but he's under big pressure from uh, someone who's well whoever it may be someone either of the centrals being uh, of a physical stature similar to himself yes the leave of this detailing him at the moment and Gabriel as the spare man City playing out from the back work a brisk ball four down the inside left channel and Alvarez will chase it manfully although he knew he wasn't going to get there and Saliba plays it across the edge of his own penalty area and Gabriel finds Shaka. Now they play it out towards Martinelli in his black gloves over on the far touch line. He's lost it. City bring it forward. Haaland towards the edge of the penalty area. Now Grealish. Grealish with quick feet away from Tommy Asu. Takes him to a central area and gets it away from Lakonga. He's only going sideways, but he can play the ball to the feet of Bernardo Silva. Back it goes from him to Kyle Walker. Substitutes combining. Rodri. Gundogan flashes it back out to Walker Walker's got Shaka right in front of him Alvarez drops off finds a little bit of space shooting position for him stings the palm of Turner and it remains at 1-0 yeah long distance shot done well keeping it on target but straight at the goalkeeper handled it comfortably parried it to the ground it was Alvarez that played that major part in the goal with the shot from a similar position as that about 21 22 yards out which cannon back off the post Grealish picked it up two seconds later Ake had it and another couple of seconds after that it was 1-0 to Manchester City Erdegaard back for Shaka eight to go plus stoppage time Zinchenko for Arsenal who trail by a golden hill Granit Shaka now on the edge of the centre circle into Lukonga and Lukonga with more height on that pass out towards Fabio Vieira who had one of his best Arsenal performances so far in the third round win at Oxford where he set up a couple of the goals now it goes from Gabriel out towards Martinelli and back for Gabriel again just inside his own half poking it forward Ortega with two important saves in the first half but not too much to do in this second now it goes forward from Lukonga 
Plenty play down the Arsenal left at the moment, chipped in towards Eddie and Ketia. Laporte beating him in the air, and Nicol Arteta turns and looks up to the heavens. A little bit bemused on the edge of his technical area there at the lack of quality of those two up front for Arsenal in that particular moment. And then he turns once the ball has gone out of play, claps his hands and tries to get a message across to Eddie and Ketia. The Gunners still in possession. They'll be able to play it forward. Now towards the left-hand side for Zinchenko. Zinchenko working it back through the midfield towards Lekonga. Lekonga's got Tommy Acid to his right. Now he goes out towards Fabio Vieira. Fabio Vieira for Arsenal, who've got seven minutes left. Back from Tommy Acid. Saliba. Ake's got all the difference. Arsenal on the front foot as they look for an equaliser. Erdegaard, Erdegaard, Erdegaard taking on Grealish. Almost showed too much of it to Ake and, and then just retain possession in the nick of time. Gets it back. Play through the midfield. Under duress. Alvarez putting the pressure on. Now coming in off the left-hand side. Lekonga has continued his run forward and Ketia is lurking in there as well. And Walker is forced to concede the corner. The end of the ground that houses the Arsenal fans. Infused by that. And is this their moment to try and find an equalising goal? Yeah, Walker done well there. He's surged your pace really, really important. Looked as though they've a little give and go over the top of the uh, City defence, but Walker done brilliantly in his recovery. Gabriel and Shaka and Tommy Asu and Saliba all in and around the edge of the six-yard box. Ketty is a little bit deeper. There's no Manchester City player on him. But Grealish has got his eye on him. Grealish standing spare man inside the six-yard box will be the man that will defend zonally here and try and stop Nketiah. Erdegaard waits unmarked on the edge of the D. Alvarez on the edge of the box, everyone else in the penalty area. In it comes, good defensive header. Steers it clear. Back out towards Martinelli. Martinelli getting into the byline. Trying to run the ball. Almost past Ortega who got a strong hand to it. Flicks it away. Now he goes for another corner. I'll tell you what, I think it was Rodri who got his head to that ball at the near post. It was some header, I've got to say. And when the ball was off, cleared. The City back line squeezed up, allowing Arsenal to get to the touch line. They're taking the corner. And get a throw out of it. Worked it short, not to good effect. Well, Zinchenko has the opportunity potentially to arch the back and Hall throw a long one inside the penalty area. He's resisted that. Zinchenko taking it down towards the corner flag. Ends up uh, getting uh, bundled over. And he goes back out of play for another throw. And the clock's ticking down quickly. 85 on the clock now. Manchester City 1, Arsenal 0. Well, they've had the lead for just over 20 minutes. Throw to be taken on the Arsenal left, back to Lekonga. Yeah, as I say, apart from the odds skirmish, City are, are quite happy to get very compact at this moment in time. You see the ball just flashing across in front of them rather than in behind them. Shaka. Now towards Zinchenko. Gabriel for Saliba, who controls it. Comes back into Manchester City territory. City still well disciplined, keeping the shape behind the ball, forcing Arsenal to take two steps back before they can come forward again. And you watch Odegaard with his movement, really clever, always on the move, scanning over his shoulder, just looked at him for the last minute or so and just finds little pockets of space and asks questions, plays in between everybody. They need to find him if they can with the ball. Shaka and Ketia nodding it down. Erdegaard trying to get there. Leaves it for Shaka. Good ball inside the penalty area. Good goalkeeping. Ortega. As Martinelli was sprinting forward. He made a run in behind the city back line. And Ortega came out. It was very sharp. Good anticipation. And brought the ball into his body as he came out and slid at the feet of the Arsenal attacker. And it remains 1 0 with three minutes of normal time to go. I think he would have just been pulled back for offside there, but good movement, good ball in behind. Turner. Through the penalty area for Saliba. Saliba to Erdegaard. Erdegaard can turn, he's dropped deep to get it. Alvarez 
and trying to make his life as difficult as possible and foul him if necessary he didn't manage that and Arsenal can bring it forward Sinchenko two and a half to go Martinelli it's been lively since coming on taking on Walker he's beaten him gets to the byline pulls it back it might break for Erdegaard or for Enkedia in the end neither and Ortega comes out and counters again I've got to say Walker should have done better there he pinned him at a touch line and then let him wriggle free and when it bounced Ortega took things into his own hands literally and just dealt with the problems and he's done quite well tonight credit to him done really well I think made a couple of very smart saves in off his line and dealt with problems that potentially uh, could have escalated now if he can just keep his clean sheet intact his fourth in seven city appearances for the next few minutes Manchester City are in the round of 16 Grealish going down referee plays the advantage Bernardo Silva has it Walker Gundogan back out of the car Walker again Walker controlling it 90 seconds to go four minutes maybe to be added on could be five I suppose Akanji now play four by Laporte now Laporte who came on as a substitute in the first half of the injured John Stones Rodri plays it back for Ortega high clearance from him Haaland having a look to see who was where Gabriel never too far away from him beat him Haaland has cut a dejected figure at times tonight hasn't had a, a glimmer of an opportunity and his FA Cup debut what that he won't necessarily remember with any great fondness but it is going his way in terms of the the overall destiny of the spoils tonight as we go into the 90th minute here's Eddie and Ketty has dropped very deep for Arsenal picking it up turning getting away from Alvarez and then losing out and Arteta again he's been used by that and City will be able to bring it forward not with any great pace but they can get it out of harm's way Bernardo Silva to Rodri Rodri inside his own half of the centre circle finds Laporte Ake urged to play it forward rather than backwards into the feet of Grealish, Grealish nudging it back for Laporte again and Laporte will go back for Ortega but City making a, a successful job of just keeping the ball here under pressure yeah, when teams are trying to chase you and you've got the ability in your ranks to keep the ball like they do you know, it just takes a sting out of the game time and time again and they're absolutely fantastic at it City there's nothing worse you're 1-0 down, you want possession of the ball to go and have an impact on the opposition and they just keep the ball off you four minutes of stoppage time to go, we're in them Manchester City 1 Arsenal 0 Is it going to be another Arsenal defeat on this ground? They've suffered a few. They've played so much better tonight than they have in many of their most recent trips to Manchester City. Well, there's a familiarity about the end result if it stays this way. Gundogan. Arsenal will be more than confident of getting some revenge on February the 15th, but revenge will be on the agenda that night as well as everything else as things stand at the moment Jack Grealish has got it on the Manchester City left hand side just over three minutes of stoppage time remaining and Nathan Ake's goal on 64 still the difference between the two teams Ortega and Lenketia with more intensity about the press this time Ortega stumbling as he got it clear but he found Walker Walker comes back inside his own half getting the better of Zinchenko who's falling to the ground and gets a yellow card yeah, clever play by Walker there and City in general. Kept the ball, come out from Grealish on the left wing. Back to the goalie, diagonal ball. Walker could have helped it on. He pulled it down and his little injection of pace coming infield just induced the free kick. Now, Nathan Ake just been announced as the sponsor's man of the match. He's right up there. You can't have too many complaints about that one. No, I think... Uh, on an overview of the 90 minutes or so I think Rodri's played pretty well at the heart of the midfield but Aki's been the standout player I thought Trossard done well in the first half and was Arsenal's best player but Aki what he's done defensively to stop Arsenal's best player in Saka has been impressive and then to turn up in the box to guide one in to, to break deadlock has been even more impressive Kyle Walker's back on his feet and play will resume with a Manchester City free kick 
and a yellow card is shown to Ilkay Gundogan for delaying the restart. These yellow cards can sort up very quickly in the FA Cup. Uh, yellow card for Gundogan, the first City player booked tonight. He's uh, taken the free kick, it's further out towards the far side. About two minutes to play. And down by the corner flag, Bernardo Silva is in there. And Martinelli has won it back. Uh, Alvarez uh, trying to regain possession. Silva playing it in. Now for Alvarez again. He's inside the Arsenal penalty area. It's a lovely little pirouette there. Uh, but no end product to go with it. And it goes out of play down by the corner flag. Walker shepherded it out. And the assistant referee said, throw to Arsenal. <laughs> But yeah, so there have been a few decisions that the fans have not been too happy with. Goal kick to Arsenal now. After the throw that they took quickly was blocked. Time not on their side. The Gunners play it out quickly. We're in the fourth and final minute of stoppage time. Stoppage time is going to be elongated because of the time that Walker spent on the deck. So there's probably 90 seconds of playing time left. Ake going up for it. It's gone off the top of his head, but he was just shoved under the ball by Enketia. And he gets up and he feels the small of his back, and it actually doubles up pretty well as a bow from Nathan Ake to the Manchester City fans on this near side. And taking the plaudits for an excellent performance. And the blue moon is on the rise, Stuart Pearce, because Manchester City are going to be in the fifth round. Yeah, I think there's no doubt whichever team won this, you're going to turn around and say big win, certainly in their prospects to get their hands on the FA Cup in a few rounds' time, and uh, maybe just as importantly as well is stunt the confidence of, of your main rivals uh, in the Premier League chase. Throw taken by Arsenal, but they're still deep inside their own half, and the need is one of desperation now. Saliba getting it forward and getting it forward as quickly as possible Forty comes through the midfield but Laporte wins it back play for by Bernardo Silva clever little flick from him he's got it in Arsenal territory that's all that matters for Manchester City at the moment he's then brought down and City will be able to run the clock down after that foul from Zinchenko and that'll just about be that no way back from here surely for Arsenal because by the time the free kick is taken we'll have played more than five minutes of stoppage time Yeah, I don't know whether we turn around at the end of this and say those couple of changes, you know, maybe from Arsenal, making one or two more changes in City, has probably just cost them the, the opportunity to get through the tie. Carl Walker takes the free kick, whacks it into the stand, and the full-time whistle blows. For the first time since 1904, Manchester City have knocked Arsenal out of the FA Cup. In the recent meetings between these two in this competition, it has gone the way of the Gunners. They've then gone on to glory. Not this time round. Nathan Ake's goal, 20 minutes into the second half, gives Manchester City a place in the last 16. Potentially, potentially, a psychological advantage as well. Going into the first of the league meetings between these two on February the 15th. But the bottom line is that Ake's goal has seen City over the line. Arsenal will hope that another FA Cup meeting with Manchester City will still see a season-ending glory. But it'll be in the league and not the Cup if it is to happen. The Gunners, top of the Premier League, eliminated from the FA Cup, knocked out by their nemesis Manchester City, who beat them tonight by Golden Hill.